Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope that you're doing well. In a previous video, I showed that I picked up a new watercolour palette. This is a 16 well watercolour palette and I've had it on my wish list for quite a few years now and I finally picked it up. And I'm going to be setting it up today and doing all of my colour choices, colour theory crafting and all of that lovely stuff using these watercolours. So these are all of the watercolours that I own. I have showed this box before and I'm only going to be using pigments that I already own. I'm not buying any new pigments for this palette. So we're, we're, <laughs> we're working with what we have and we have plenty to choose from. At the moment now I'm only replacing colours once they've been used up, so when I use this tube up I'll be replacing it. I've not been buying any new pigments recently, so that's what we're going to be going with. And in order to start considering what I'm going to put in this palette, I'm going to be using this. So every time I get a new watercolour, I make a swatch card like this. Some of them are different sizes, but they're all on the same watercolour paper. It's all on 100% cotton watercolour paper, and these are all on Saunders Waterford paper on cold press. And, oop, knocked you there. They're all different sizes as well, depending on when... I made them. I think the oldest ones are all these smaller sizes and then the newer ones are bigger sizes. So I'm going to be using these to decide my colours alongside my experience with the watercolours as well and what I need for mixing. So the core of my palette is going to be a warm cool version of each primary with an extra addition for the blue and this is just based on preferences that I have with colour mixing already and I'm going to be picking out colours from here for the warm and cool primaries. So first off I am not using this one, I'm going to be using somewhere in here. This one. So I have two ultramarines, I actually have three now, but I'm going to be using this ultramarine. The reason why I say I have three is because last year I picked up the Schmincke ultramarine, but I haven't actually made a swatch sheet for that yet, I believe. It might come up in here, but I don't believe I've made it one yet. And I mainly use this Ultramarine Deep for mixing and then I use the Schmincke Ultramarine when I want granulation because the Schmincke Ultramarine that I have is very, very granulating whereas the Sennelier Ultramarine Deep is not as granulating as other, as you can see here, it's not as granulating as other brands can be. But I don't have much of the French Ultramarine from Daniel Smith left and rather than pick up another one of that I ended up replacing it with the Schmincke one last year and that is going to be my warm blue to start off with and now we're going to look for what I want in a cool blue now I'm tempted to go with this. I usually go with phthalo turquoise when I'm doing much smaller palettes, for example my six colour palette, because I found it helpful having that midway between green and blue to be useful in a smaller selection of pigments but when I have 16 I don't know necessarily if I want to go with this or if I'd want to go with the phthalo blue on its own and the phthalo green on its own. So we're going to put that in a maybe for now and we're going to look at what else I have. I do have cerulean chromium 
and I have phthalo blue green shade and phthalo green blue shade which was what I was just mentioning so what I could do is I could go with this as my cool blue rather than this because this is between these two and then I if I go with this I'd most likely want to have this as a green shade on the palette as well so that's something I'm going to have to decide on so I'm going to put all of those stacked together for my blue for additional blues I know for certain if I can find it that I want Inden Throne I love using Inden Throne blue I do tend to find that, especially with British landscapes, I tend to reach for Indian Throne more when I'm doing skies and water here. It tends to be a little bit more muted down than, say, a pure ultramarine. So I do really, really love using Indian Throne. So that's more of a staple palette option for me, and it's not going to be involved in the split primaries necessarily it's more just an additional blue next up is the yellows now when I'm going with a smaller palette I generally go with PY 150 this is my preferred mixing yellow and to be honest I'm probably going to go with this as my cool yellow even though you can argue it, it's leaning a little bit more towards like a mid-yellow but it does get a little bit cooler in its when it's watered down so I want to have a warmer yellow and this is where we're going to run into some interesting choices <laughs> because I don't have a lot of choice of, of different pigments when it comes to yellows see another option i could have actually is to have this as a warmer yellow and then have azo green as a cooler yellow again <laughs> this is more of like a a green a, it's a very yellow green so that would potentially be an option an interesting slightly different option so we'll pop that over there I don't have a lot of yellows because I tend to rely so heavily on PY150. I've never really felt the need to buy many more. This could be a potential warm yellow option. Again, it's, it's an orange rather than a yellow, but it is a very yellow leaning orange. So that could be a potential pairing. So we'll put that over with the Azo Green. Let's have a look in this pile. There. So these are the first two yellows that I got from Professional Line. I've mentioned in the past in previous videos that my first experience with Artist Watercolours was buying the Warm Cool Split Primaries uh, set by Daniel Smith. So for that set at the time, I don't know if it's changed since, but at the time these were the two cool and warm yellows offered in that set. And I do still have some of the new gamboge, so I could have those two as a pairing. But honestly, for me and how I mix and paint, this is very, very close to the PY150. Not exactly, because it is definitely warmer. But say, for example, if I went with this, this is a lot warmer. Because the similarities between these two, even though this is definitely a lot warmer, 
I'm not sure if I would necessarily always gravitate towards using this over this versus using this when I mix with warm yellows. A lot of colour choices and colour mixing and things like that, come, it comes down to personal choice as well. So some of the pigments that I pick out here, you might just not get along with because how you like to colour mix is completely different to how I like to colour mix. There's definitely colour theory behind it, but then there's also preference on top of that as well. So that is a potential pairing too. So we're going to put these together. And next we're going to move on to the reds. So we've done the blues, we've had a look at the yellows, next is the reds. Straight up cool red is PV19 for me, that is my preferred cool red. So here is a preference thing coming in, right? Uh, some people love quinacridone rose as their cool red, some people love quinacridone magenta for their cool red, and then some people love entirely different pigments as well. For me, and how I like to mix, and the things and the colours that I like to mix, I love PV19 at the moment, and I have for <laughs> a few years now. So this is a palette staple cool red for me. And that is going to be the cool red. And again, we're going to get into some interesting decisions when it comes to the warm red now. When I got the split primaries for Daniel Smith, these were the two colours that I got. Which is probably where I fell in love with PB19. <laughs> and... Pyrrole Scarlet is still one of my favourite warm reds, but I don't have a lot of it left. I'm not sure if I have enough to put in this palette if I were to choose this as my warm red. But I'm going to put it down here anyway. Another warm red option that I like going for is actually Transparent Pyrrole Orange, but this version of Transparent Pyrrole Orange has since changed, kind of discontinued. When you buy Transparent Pyrrole Orange from Daniel Smith now, it looks completely different. And I haven't bought the new version of it yet. I do still have quite a full tube of this still, so I could still use this. It's just whether or not I'd want to, with it being a I don't know necessarily if the pigment's discontinued or if it's just that the paint has changed. I'm not super sure. I'd need to check up on that before saying exactly what's happened to it. So we have also... This I wouldn't necessarily call a warm red. I'd call it more of a mid-red. So we've got permanent red deep. And it's definitely warmer than the PV19, but it has a coolness to the watered down and even the mass tone as well. It's it's very, I'd definitely say it's more of a mid-red. If we were to go with red-orange, that's starting to lean heavily more into the orange rather than the warm red but I have used red orange in my six color limited palette as a warm red kind of like I've used this as a cool blue so it's a potential option and it's also a color that I am more used to using now because of the six color palette so I'm not sure on that one yet but I don't think I'd use that. Now, definites, earth tones. I know for certain that I want these three. Yellow Ochre by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith has absolutely gorgeous earth tones based on my preferences. I love their yellow ochre, it's my favourite yellow ochre. 
I love their Burnt Sienna, it's my favourite Burnt Sienna. <laughs> and their Burnt Umber is also my favourite Burnt Umber. So these are, when I have loads of palette space, I love having these three earth tones minimum. I love using loads of different earth tones when I have lots of palette space available to me. And I also love using, if I can find it, here we are, brown red as well, which is in my six colour limited palette. So those are earth tones that I want to use. If I were to order them, I'd order them like that in the palette. So those are also definites. So we have one, so we have the six mixed primaries, uh, split primaries. We have one, two, three, four, five of the additional colours. So that is 11. So we have five free choices on top of this as well. <laughs> Let's see. Right, I am going to do some off screen <laughs> decision making so that this video doesn't get too long and I'm going to come back to you once I've started narrowing down colours and then talk a little bit about why I made those choices. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, after all of that shuffling around of papers, I have picked out the colours that I'm going to use in this palette. Some of them are mixing staples for me, some of them I'm going to be revisiting, and then some of them I want to learn more about. So I've split them up into three different categories for you. We've got the split primaries up here, which I'll go through first, the earth tones, and then we have the specialty and additional colours. So starting off with the primary, the split primary, we have a warm and a cool of yellow, red and blue. I went with the yellow, red and blue that I know I love. I love it in colour mixing. It's pretty much on every, they're on every palette I use apart from the six colour palette with the ultramarine, but we'll ignore that. And um, this is going to be my cool yellow. I went with the Azo Orange for my warm yellow. It is a very, very warm yellow. <laughs> Arguably an orange. Um, it's in the name, but for how I've split this out, I feel like it fits in the warm yellow category for me with this arrangement. I went with this rather than the new Gamboge in the end because of the larger difference between when you spread these out. There's, ni there's a nice gap between each of these three, so I'm more likely to reach for one of them when I'm looking for a warm yellow or if I'm looking for the warm red. And I went with Transparent Pyral Orange in the end. It's a colour that I know that I really like working with and I do still have plenty of it to use on this palette. I just need to get over the idea of it being used up. And then I went over those two. I went with Thalo Blue Green Shade in the end. I decided to split the two pigments up. So all of these pigments here are sing all of these paints I've chosen are single pigments. I ended up splitting these up just because I have the palette space to widen my colour mixing options by having the pigments separate. That covers the split primaries. Next are the earth tones I've picked. So I briefly went over these three. I love having these on my larger palettes. I find that I tend to reach for these two, Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber, a lot when I want to mix it with Ultramarine for really, really interesting greys and dark tones, especially when I want them to be heavily granulating. Yellow Ochre is just a lovely base colour to use on my paintings and to sometimes create really, really muted greens. I do tend to reach for brown-red when I'm doing 
much more involved colour mixing. What I mean by involved is this is transparent, whereas if I were to compare it to the Burnt Sienna that I have here, although I love this Burnt Sienna, it is definitely more opaque. It's semi-transparent, but it almost looks more semi-opaque when you see how much has deposited over the black line. So I can get much cleaner mixes when I'm mixing many more pigments together with the brown red. Plus, I really, really love how the brown red produces really dark tones with Indian Throne and also Thalo Blue. So that covers those earth tones. For an additional earth tone, I picked Bloodstone. This is more of just an additional specialty colour, but I put it up here with the earth tones. I've used Bloodstone in the past, but I haven't used it in the last few years, so this is one I'm going to be revisiting with this palette. I really love it for its granulation, adding subtle dark granulation to my mixes. I have over here, I do have Luna Black which I sometimes use for adding much more intense, as you can see, much more intense granulation, dark granulation to mixes. But this is more subtle, still noticeable, but more subtle. And it also is warmer than the Luna Black. It's almost got like a an almost purplish warmth to it, which is lovely. I've used bloodstone in the past to on its own for painting rocks and providing an interesting texture to grey subjects. For the additional colours, Indian Throne is, is just going to be on there. It's a blue that I love using. I like having lots of blues and greens available to me. This is just a preference with how I mix and how I paint. I like to have lots and lots of variety when it comes to that area of the colour spectrum. You may be different, you may be one of these people that loves to have loads of different reds. It's always interesting looking at palette choices like these and seeing what an artist prefers using over another artist. It just highlights our different creative voices and how our creativity and preferences and things in art making work between each other. So I have many more blues <laughs> and greens in this, this entire section is blues and greens actually, if we ignore Bloodstone. So Indian Throne is just going to be on there for me. I love it for colour mixing, I love it for using it as is, I don't need to mute it down when I'm using it sometimes. Cerulean Chromium I use as a specialty colour primarily for its granulation. I love adding this to my mixes to have a light blue granulating effect in the mixes and that's pretty much just why I have it there. It's almost like a, it's warmer than a phthalo blue but it's almost like having a granulating version of a phthalo blue even though it's warmer. So I've got those. As I mentioned I split up these two so I have phthalo green blue shade and then as a specialty version of this kind of shade I have Viridian by M. Graham. This is actual Viridian. Some brands like say Shinhan they name Thalo Green Viridian, but this is actual Viridian and vir proper Viridian granulates. So this is a non-granulating and a granulating very similar hue. And I use this when I want to have granulating greens and also granulating green in mixes. Say for example like Moon Glow, if I were to try and make that colour myself I can by having Viridian on my palette. And I like using M. Graham's because it's the only one I've used in my experience which can easily re-wet once dry. And that's just because M. Graham is a lot harder to dry. <laughs> and finally I went with Azo Green. And I went with this for two reasons. One was slightly because when I'm mixing very yellow greens I could reach for this over my... PY150 just to keep that a little bit more 
clean. But primarily, one reason why I want this on my palette is actually to do with colour mixing. And it's because when you mix it with PV19, you can get a really, really interesting base for skin tones. So you'd start out with mixing these two together, and the slight green element of the Azo Green neutralises down the red in this, but enough that you get like a really rich skin tone and then you can modify it with water but then and the pigment load but then you can also modify it with other pigments that you add to the colour mix as well so I have this for skin tone mixing and that's it these are my colour choices so I'm now going to get it all into the palette Here we have the final palette pour with some messy pores here and what I did was I generally like to start with yellow and then go round but what I did was I have my split primaries here and then we go into the additional blues and then onwards and around so I usually go yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, green earth tones typically green into the more yellow earth tones and then you get darker and darker that's how I prefer to set up most of my palettes so what we have here in the end are the split primaries up to here and then we go in with Indian Throne, Cerulean and then onwards into the greens and then the browns I have used up a couple of my earth tone tubes now so those are going to go onto the to be renewed list to buy some more and try not to get tempted with new pigments which I'm yeah I'm trying to only buy <laughs> I'm trying to only renew paints I already have and use at the moment but I'm very excited to let this dry and then start painting with it I'm going to be leaving it with the lid slightly ajar and then leaving it to dry for probably about a week. De it'll depend on how long 
it's going to take with the current weather. It's really hot and humid here at the moment. So we shall see how long it takes to dry. Some of them are going to need longer, especially some of the Emgrim and Shinhan colours are probably going to need a little bit longer to dry. But I imagine a week is probably what it's going to need. So this will get closed slightly and I'll just pop like a little something here just to prop it up. Because if I pop a pencil in or something, it's probably going to roll over the paint. So I'll prop some stuff in there to hold it up. And then we will start painting with it in a few weeks time, which is very exciting. I might be taking this palette with me on a trip as well. And if I do, I will be doing videos of me painting while I'm away. So you'll get to see this in action as a travel palette, because this is essentially going to be my largest travel palette. It's going to be a hybrid palette for me. It fits in both the studio and travel palette area. So we shall see what it's like once it's dry. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of the subscribers, all of the likes and comments and all of the support on my videos. I appreciate you all so much. If you have any questions about paint or if you just want to chat paint and pigments, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye!